Greetings, geoscientists. In this class, we're going to be dealing a lot with measuring things and converting one type of unit into another type of unit and making sure that the theory all works. And many of you have worked, done this kind, uh, these kinds of calculations before. Uh, even if you have, maybe you need a little bit of practice doing it or a little refresher course. For a few of you, this might be new material. And if it's new, uh, you're going to have to get used to it. But you're doing it all the time anyway in your head. When you um, are, uh, uh, say, you're, you're cooking or you're baking, um, you're trying to figure out how many cups there are in a quart. And so you're doing these kinds of conversions or how many tablespoons are in a cup or things like that. And so you're looking up these conversions and you're doing them in your head or you're calculating them. It's really, really common. This is called dimensional analysis, this approach that we are using different, we're working with different units of length or mass or volume or time, and we're making sure that our calculations all give us the numbers or the conversions that we need to. Well, as you know, if you can't figure out how to do anything these days, you can just YouTube it. You can, you can do a search on YouTube and find great explanations of things and this is a perfect example of that. If, if, you, if you need some help, if you want to do some practice problems in dimensional analysis, just take a look on YouTube. But this short video is going to walk us through a couple of these problems ourselves. All right, get rid of my face, and we're going to take a look at this. Okay, so our first example here, example one, we want to convert 65 miles per hour into kilometers per hour. So in the United States, of course, we tend to measure our speeds when we're driving our cars in miles per hour. And you see our, our signs along the highway in miles per hour. Uh, but almost everywhere else in the world, they measure it in kilometers per hour. So um, you might be in a situation you're trying to figure out this conversion. And most of you already know how this works, but let's make sure we understand the numbers. So first of all, there are some things that you just have to commit to your memory. And I'm assuming most of you have at this point. You need some way of converting between miles and kilometers. You need to know what that conversion is. Or you could do it even with uh, conversions of feet per meters. So for instance, I remember, and this will work okay for us, I remember that there are 6.2 miles in every 10 kilometers. And the reason I remember that is because back in my younger days and I was a runner, I used to do a lot of 10 kilometer races, and we used to know that that was always 6.2 miles. 10 kilometers equals 6.2 miles, or a 5K race is, is 3.1 miles. Easy math. So most of you already know this already. You may also remember that there's 3.281 feet in a mile or 0 0.3048, I'm sorry, 3.281 feet per meter. And that's the same as uh, 0 0.3048 meters per foot. So you probably want to memorize that conversion as well. Uh, and sorry, I didn't make it up. We're stuck in these units in the United States, at least for the time being. You need to know how to convert from feet to miles or miles to feet. And one mile equals 5,280 feet. You have to memorize that. Sorry, suck it up, buttercup. Just make sure you know that conversion. All right, so let's come back. We're converting 65 miles per hour into kilometers per hour. How are we going to do this? Well, here's how we're going to lay this out. 65 miles per hour. We're going to make a fraction, miles per hour. So we're putting miles in the numerator, hours in the denominator. And remember that there are 10 kilometers for every 6.2 miles. So I can set that up into another fraction where that I put 10 kilometers in the numerator and 6.2 miles in the denominator. Now, once we do that and we multiply those, so this little dot here in the middle is the multiplication sign, just shorthand notation. That means 65 times 10 divided by 6.2. And look what happens. Because we have miles in the numerator over here and miles in the denominator over here, they cancel out. So we're going to be left with units of kilometers per hour. And that, when we take 65 multiplied by 10 divided by 6.2, that's 104.8 kilometers per hour. So what we're saying is 65 miles per hour is the equivalent of 104.8 kilometers per hour. 
or essentially 105 kilometers per hour. 65 miles per hour equals 105 kilometers per hour. Whenever you do this kind of conversion, you want to look at this answer and ask yourself, hey, does it make sense? Is, am I in the right ballpark here? Is this number a reasonable number for what I already know? And if you drive a car, most of us in the United States drive cars that show miles per hour on the speedometer as well as kilometers per hour on the same speedometer. So if the needle is pointing to 65 miles per hour, that will be right through here. And notice that's right at 105 kilometers per hour. So you could check this in your car if you want. You know, do the calculation, then run out to your car and check your speedometer. <laughs> so uh, yes, it makes sense. We're happy with that answer. It makes sense to us. Um, it's um, a little bit less than twice the number. All right, so let's do another example, okay? And before we get to this, this is where things can get tri tricky. How do we convert uh, units that are squared or cubed? And people make this mistake all the time in their calculations in this course. So for instance, let's say we want to convert one cubic meter into cubic centimeters. Sorry, I should have put this into a um, uh, superscript. We want to convert one cubic meter into cubic centimeters. Well, you know that there are 100 centimeters in every meter, right? There, one meter equals 100 centimeters, or 100 centimeters equals one meter. So we can set that up as this fraction. Everybody needs to know there are 100 centimeters in a meter. That's what centa means. It means one hundredth. So there are 100 centimeters in a meter. There are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. you got to know those conversions. All right, so how is this going to work for us? Easy. We take one cubic meter and we multiply it by a hundred centimeters for every meter but notice we need to do that three times you cannot it's not the same as saying that there are a hundred cubic centimeter per cubic meter that is wrong there's a hundred centimeters per meter but because meters are cubed over here we need to cube our 100 centimeters. In other words, we need to do this multiplication three times. So we're going to take one cubic meter times 100 times 100 times 100. And that way we see meters will cancel out three times in the denominator, denominator sorry, and once in the numerator for cubic meters. And so we are going to be left with one times a hundred times a hundred times a hundred that's six zeros so in other words one million centimeters there are one million centimeters in one cubic meter there are not a hundred cubic centimeters in a cubic meter there are a million cubic centimeters in a cubic meter we can also set it up like this which is just <laughs> a little bit quicker one cubic meter and then we're going to take 100 centimeters per meter. That's a, that's a conversion I remember. And we're just going to cube that. So you got, it's the same as saying 100 times 100 times 100. And we're going to come up with a million cubic centimeters. So there is our conversion. All right. So let's, let's see where we can use that. Okay. So last week, in, in uh, structural tectonics anyway, we talked about the density of quartz. And I said, you need to just memorize the density of quartz. There are 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter for quartz. Every cubic centimeter has a mass of 2.65 grams. Water, of course, has a density of one. That's a really easy number to remember. So the density of quartz is 2.65 times that of water. Quartz will not float, it will sink. So these are easy numbers to remember, but these are now what we call SI units, the, the uh, standard international units that scientists use. The SI units of mass are kilograms, not, uh, not grams, and the SI units of length are meters. So let's convert 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. We're going to convert that into kilograms per Per cubic meter. So we're going to take 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter, there's our number we remember, and we're going to multiply that by the fraction 1 kilogram 
times a thousand grams. There are a thousand grams in a kilogram. Kilo means 1,000. So 1,000 grams per kilogram. Notice I put a thousand grams at the, in the bottom of the fraction in the denominator. That means that the grams are going to cancel out. Sorry, I left a red mark off here. Should have been here instead. I goofed up, uh, but it'll still work. And um, boy, I really messed this up, didn't I? <laughs> Let me fix this now. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to fix this. This should just be up here. And this is going to go away. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I should have looked more closely. There we go. That'll work for us. Okay, so 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter, and we're going to multiply that by one kilogram over a thousand grams, and we're going to multiply that by a hundred centimeters per meter, and we're cubing that whole quantity, so it's going to be a hundred times a hundred times a hundred. So I put in my calculator 2.65 divided by a thousand times a hundred times a hundred times a hundred, and I come up with 2,650 kilograms per cubic meter. That's going to be a number that's really useful for us when we are doing calculations this semester of, uh, of, of stress at depth, we're going to find. So you can remember 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter, but remember that that's equivalent to 2,650 kilograms per cubic meter. Similarly, one gram per cubic centimeter like for water, density of water, is equivalent to a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. So we will remember those conversions. So make sure you know how to do these conversions. When you're writing them out on paper, you want to do what I'm telling you to do and not what I had done. <laughs> you want to cancel these out, draw a line through units, and make sure you are canceling the correct units and you look through and say, did they, did they cancel out on both sides of that equation? But I caught myself there, and there's a lesson to learn. All right, that's it for now. Thank you.